Missy's music class. I have missed you. I hope you all are doing great. And uh, we're going to have some fun today with one of my favorite families. Now, last week, if you recall, we talked about the Woodwind family. And I hope you remember all the different things. Maybe you had an opportunity to use your straws and to make that Woodwind um, read sound with those straws and had a fun time with that. Well, today we're going to talk about can you guess? Hmm, are there some clues around the room that you might see? You guessed it! The String Family. We're going to talk about the String Family today, which is a great, awesome family. And today I have with me... Hey, it's Ashley Grace. And... Ivy Rose. And joining us just a little later, we have a special guest. Mr. C is going to join us to play a little bit for us as well. So, oh! And I have an even specialer guest than that. We'll wait for that. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the string family. Okay, now the string family is pretty easy to recognize. What do you have to have to belong to the string family? Do you know? Strings. You gotta have strings. Pretty simple. If it has strings, it belongs to the string family. Okay, now here I have a soprano ukulele. Um, so, of course, if it's a soprano, it's going to be smaller. The girls have, um, you hold up your ukuleles. Okay. All right. So, there's just a little bit bigger. They're called concert ukuleles. Yes. Those are the concert ukuleles. All right. So, I'm going to use this to help us a little bit just because it's smaller for us to look at. And so, as we're looking at the stringed instruments, there are three different ways that you can play a stringed instrument. You can pluck the strings. This one's good in tune, isn't it? You can pluck, pluck the strings. You can strum. Sounds good, doesn't it? Strum the strings. Or you can bow. Now, what string instruments use a bow. Think about it. Ooh, hmm. cello. <laughs> cello? Cello. Uh -oh. bow. I thought you said jello. <laughs> cello? She's correct. Yes, a cello would use a bow. A guitar. Hmm. Does a guitar use a bow? No. Oh, no. Violin. It does not. A violin. Good job. Now, unfortunately, my violin's at school. And so we're going to have to improvise a little bit. So let's pretend, because this is small, that this is a violin, okay? Now, do you play a violin how? Hmm. Do you remember? You put it up on your shoulder, and usually there is a little chin rest right here that you use to play it. And you put it on your chin like that, and then you can pluck the strings when you're playing it. But what do they normally use? A bow. A bow. Now, of course, I didn't have a bow. I had lots of hair bows, but I did not have anything that was a bow. So I thought, hmm, how am I going to show them a bow? And the closest thing I could find was this back scratcher. Hmm. Yeah. Now, a bow, what was used to, what's used to make the bow? Remember, it has, usually it would have it going along here. Do you know what they used? Here's a clue. Nay, horse nay. Hair. What, Abby? Horse hair. Yes, they would use horse hair. Now, we don't have a horse, so I thought, hmm, what could we use? You got an idea? I got an idea. I'm going to introduce you to somebody. Come here, Lucy. Come here. This is Lucy. She's been asleep, weren't you? Now, if Lucy, could we use Lucy's hair, maybe, to make the bow of the string? No. You don't think that'd work? No. No, they usually use the hair of a horsetail, which is usually nice and long, right? And they would put the horse hair on the bow, right? You see? Mm -hmm. On the bow and stretch it out. And then that would be used. You'd put some resin on there and wax it up and then use that on the bow. 
okay? So you're gonna have to use your imagination a little bit when we talk about bowing an instrument, okay? So if you're, thanks Lucy. If you're holding your violin like this and you are going to take the bow across the strings, right? And it's gonna make, and you're gonna be able to play it. Now, of course, that's a terrible sound. Yeah. But if you play it like this, you're that's called bowing the instrument. Now, at the end, I'm gonna remind you, I've added some extra listening examples on the lesson on the website, so you can go to and listen to some violins playing and some other instruments that are in the orchestra. All right, so we've talked about, we've got the violin, and we have the viola. What else? What other instruments? Abby said the cello, not the jello, but There's the a, cello. That big, it's called a string bass, and it's all the way taller than you are. Yeah, it's super big, play string it. bass. Now, when you play the string bass, do you have to stand or sit? You have to stand. You might, if you're if you're really tall, could sit on a stool, but you probably have to stand. Okay, you could sit on a stool. But one thing to remember, a cello, you sit and play the cello. Remember, it's big, and you reach around, and you would play it like this, but the bigger one is the string bass. So let's think a little bit. The violin, the viola, those are smaller. The string bass, which is big. Which one do you think makes a high sound? The smaller one. That's right. Remember we talk about the smaller it is, the higher the sound, and the bigger it is, the lower the sound. Okay, so it works the same way with the string family. The smaller the instrument, the higher the sound, the bigger it is, the lower the sound. All right, so we've talked about bowing and strumming and plucking the instrument. Now, if you look right here, can you see this little tiny thing? Let's see. If I put my hand like that, can you see it? This is a guitar pick, okay? And the guitar pick you can use on several different instruments, okay? And it is hard plastic pick. You know, sometimes people can make their own guitar picks. Um, and this, is, this helps kind of save your fingers a little bit. Um, it'll make it a little bit louder than just using your finger hear the difference of that um, and so a lot of times you can use a pick there's something else that you can use and you'll get to see an example of this in a little bit this is a finger pick okay it's kind of like big long fingernails that you can have on your nail you know and you put the uh, finger pick on your fingers like that and you can pick the instrument now mr. C is going to use these in a little bit when he plays his instrument that he's going to play all right, so you've got different picks, or you can just use your fingers as well. Now, does anybody know what this is right here? It's not an iPod or a watch. Does anybody know what this is? Tune. You need, that's right, Abby, you need it to tune, okay? This one right here is an electronic, a digital tuner, and you can turn it on, and let's ask the grace. Why don't you put it on the ukulele there? So she clips it on the top part. Okay, good job. And when she strums the string, it's going to tell her if it's in tune or not. All right. Now, let's let's try this. She's playing what string is that? Oh, it's not for the right ukulele. She's actually having to set the tuner for what type of string instrument she's playing. All right, so she's playing, is that the G string? Mm -hmm. All right, so that's the G string. Now, Asha Grace, I want you to... It turns green if you get it right. Okay, show. Oh, see there, it's green. Now, let's try this. This part right here on string instruments, these are called the tuning pegs, okay? And you notice they're attached to this where the string comes up it's wrapped around, and it goes all the way down through here, okay, and it's hooked. Now, I want you to loosen that string and play it at the same time. Do you hear the pitch changing? I'm gonna tighten it now. Cause she made it real loose. Tighten it. Tighten it, tighten it as you are playing it. 
You hear that? So the tighter it is, the higher the pitch. The looser it is, the lower the pitch, okay? Now, this ukulele has four strings on it. The thicker strings have the lower sound. That's the low string. Uh-huh. So a thicker, bigger string has a low sound, and a thinner string has a high sound, okay? So many different components right there. All right, Abby, let's talk to you a little bit. What makes the sound on a string instrument? What has to happen? Do you know? What do the strings have to do? They have to vibrate. We talked a lot this year about vibrating. The strings vibrate, the sound comes out, makes sound waves, and then it hits your ear and you're able to hear the sound. Okay, so why don't you strum your ukulele, okay? Now, those strings are vibrating so fast, you can't even see it. Even if I zoom in, you wouldn't be able to see it. Maybe if I had a slow-mo camera, we might could see that, but it is so fast. So strum it again. All right, this time, I'm gonna put my finger up here at the top, and I'm gonna hold the strings down. Can you strum it? Why is that not working there? There we go, that's better. Okay, so I'm keeping it from doing what? Vibrating. vibrating. Vibrating, okay? But when I let it go, it can vibrate. Now, I'm gonna borrow this for just a second. Does anybody know what this is right here? What's that part of the instrument? Do you know? Do you remember? This is the sound hole. It's just like your mouth. When you sing, you have to open your mouth so that the sound can come out, right? And have a place to vibrate. That's why it's important to have this hole right there. Now, some people think that's the hole that your pick gets lost in a lot of times. But that's not what it's there for. It's actually there so the sound can vibrate when you play the instrument and hear it. Okay? Awesome. Now, let's bring on Mr. C. And he's going to play an instrument called the mandolin okay now let's use your imagination do you think the mandolin is going to be a big instrument or a little instrument little little it is of course you get to see it so it's little it is a little instrument right there all right mr c can you show them how many strings are on the mandolin you might want to hold it a little closer to the camera there um, there are, look at all the tuning pegs on a mandolin. Whoa. There are eight, eight tuning pegs on the mandolin. And so how many strings are on there? Eight strings. Eight strings. Okay. So can you strum the mandolin for us so we can hear that? Okay. Now the mandolin is used a lot in bluegrass music and folk music. Um, he's using a pick, a regular pick like I showed you before. Okay, and that's what he's using to play the mandolin. So we're going to sing a song together that you would know. Let's sing This Land Is Your Land in the key of C using the mandolin. sound doesn't it yeah all right so let's try a different instrument um, mr. C why don't we pull out that next one now the next instrument that he's going to play he's going to need to use those finger picks okay now what do you think this instrument is called Abby Rose what is that instrument banjo a banjo is that what you think it is mm -hmm. a banjo do you need this finger pick should be good all right so he's got the <coughs> finger picks on did you show him your hands there they go all right now abby is sort of right look at the top of this instrument 
What does it kind of remind you of? Ooh, a guitar. that kind of looks like a guitar. It does look like a guitar. This is a cool instrument because it is made, it's kind of like two instruments in one. It's called a gitjo or a banjitar, right? So if you can play guitar, it's a great instrument for you to use because it sounds like a banjo, but you play it like a guitar. And that's what Mr. C does. He knows how to play guitar. So he wanted to be able to play an instrument that sounded like a banjo. And so he was able to get this get Joe, right? Get Joe. Get Joe or banjo guitar. Uh, a banjo usually is either four string or five string. Mm -hmm. Whereas the get Joe is six string like a guitar. That's right. So it's got the six strings at the top, the six tuning pegs there you see. All right, can you give us a little strum on that? Now, what kind of music would you use this instrument for? What style of music? Same, a lot of bluegrass, country music uses a lot of banjo music. Folk music. Uh, folk music. Um, so, give us a little, we're going to play a song on the Get Joe. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's do She'll Be Coming Around the Mountain, Key of C. Okay. Y'all sing with us, okay? Here we go. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain. verses to it so we're just only gonna sing about two of those okay so that's a fun instrument to get to play all right so let's go back to the girls they are holding an instrument that is very popular um, especially with kids and teenagers today a lot of people have these um, they are the ukuleles okay so, Abby has already strummed for us the ukulele. It's the same thing as far as, you know, you've got to tune it. You saw where Astra Grace tuned hers. And so, why don't y'all play us an example of a song? And I think you're going to recognize this song. We've listened to it in class before about those two volcanoes. All right, girls, hit it. is a little bit easier to learn because it has fewer strings on it and so you're it's able to smaller, so your hand um, can fit on exactly it. and that's a good point Ashley Grace that you bring up a lot of people when they first start out playing the guitar or string instrument they give up you know why because it really hurts your fingertips because you have to press down on the different strings to make the different chords and so it takes a while to build up calluses on your fingertips so that it doesn't hurt so much. So a lot of people are like, I don't want to play this instrument. It's hard. It's too hard. But I promise if you'll practice and give it some patience, then you can learn how to play a string instrument. This is a great time to learn how to play a string instrument. There's all kind of videos um, on how to play the ukulele, how to play the guitar. And this is a great time when you have nothing else to do to learn one of those. We're um, looking at taking one for the ukulele so that we can all play together. So that'd be a fun thing to do during this time of quarantine. All right, so let's look at probably, I would say, maybe the most famous string instrument in the string family, and that is the guitar. All right, so you wanna tell us a little bit, let's see. 
You've got the different frets. Can you point to the frets on the guitar? So the frets here are the metal pieces that allow and divide up the neck of the guitar, uh, which allows you to play different chords and melodic notes all the way up the neck. Mm -hmm. And it's got the tuning pegs on there. And how many strings are on this guitar? Six. Six, yeah. Six strings are on the guitar. And hold it up there and they can see that it also has the opening. Now, I noticed that there are some buttons on the side of that guitar. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what is that for? Well, this guitar not only has the sound hole and the casing for sound to vibrate within it to produce the sound, but you can also plug up this guitar to a sound system uh, that connects here at the bottom. Then I can control the volume and the uh, treble clef, or, or excuse me, the treble and bass, uh, the EQing of the guitar. Okay, so it turns it in from an acoustic guitar to an electric guitar. To an electric guitar. Pretty cool. Ooh. All right. Now, one more thing I want you to show them at the very top of that guitar. What is that? This is called a capo. So you you might have heard people like say, cape. like a cape. Like a superhero cape? Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes it can be have superpowers because oh, if yeah. the song is too high or the song is too low and you can't sing it in the right key, you can use the capo to change the key and put it in a different key. There you go. All right. All right, so we're going to sing one of my favorite songs today. Each of Us is a Flower in the Key of D. And uh, we're going to kind of teach it to you, and then we'll sing it together as well. All right, you'll give us an intro on the guitar. and then y'all sing each of us as a flower, okay? All right, you ready? Give us an intro.
my friends. I hope that you enjoyed that song today, and I hope you enjoyed us taking a look at the string family. Um, I'm going to include on the lesson plan some other links that you can check out, like the Piano Guys. Um, they have some amazing songs. Um, there are some brothers that I'm going to put a link on a link down below on the lesson plan that you can listen to. And these brothers played instruments uh, in their bedroom and sent YouTube videos to their grandparents. And someone discovered them, and now they travel the world playing and traveling and uh, making music and having concerts, and they're great as well. And then I'll probably put a length of a symphony and orchestra um, so that you can hear the string family and what they sound like in a classical setting. So take a listen to those and enjoy those, and I'm sure you will discover um, other groups that play string instruments as well. And if you happen to have a string instrument at home, and your parent or older sibling plays one, get that out and play and practice and maybe you can practice and learn how to play one of those string instruments during this time. So I'm so excited you were here today. I hope that you will stay safe, stay well, stay strong, and remember that we're all in this together and we will be back next week with another instrument family. So I hope you have a great week. Happy making music together. I love you and I miss you. Bye.